Have a great race this morning, Gun. We'll see you at the finish line. Welcome to season two of Run With It, a show on running, fitness, and health. On today's show, we have coverage of the Vancouver Triathlon, plus coverage on the Terry Fox Run that each year draws thousands of participants to run or walk to help raise funds for cancer research. Also coming up, we were in conversation with Canadian Olympics figure skater Kevin Reynolds, who talks about his training, his next performance, and his healthy eating habits. The 13th annual Vancouver Triathlon was held in Stanley Park last month, and there were hundreds of participants from all levels of abilities. Check this out. We told you the numbers. We had about 204 in the Olympic distance, 179 in the sprint. We'd be like to see we got 23 teams, and that includes seven sprint teams that are here with us today. The event that began in 2002, now seeing its 13th version being undertaken here today. Final athlete of the day to wrap up the 2014 event here in Vancouver. The Vancouver Triathlon is racer number 260. Well, our congratulations to him. 63 year old out of Vancouver is Mr. Ed Jackson closing in. Did a 39 minute swim, did a 128 on the bike, and now wraps it up with a 345 token. Congratulations, Ed. And that officially wraps up the course for the Vancouver Triathlon 2014. We'll get it off. With me in the studio is Canadian Olympic figure skater Kevin Reynolds, who made his Olympic debut at the Sochi Games. He's here with me to talk about his figure skating career along with his training regime and following a healthy lifestyle. Welcome to the show, Kevin. 
Thanks for having me. So, did you always want to be a figure skater? Well, I, it's a typical hockey for many men's figure skaters in Canada, but uh, I was originally in hockey to begin with, and my hockey coach suggested that I should try figure skating to improve my skating skills. And so I went to the CanSkate program, and from there a coach saw my talent, and uh, we went into figure skating lessons from there. I was doing both for a number of years, actually, until the age of 13, and I was excelling in figure skating, and so I decided to choose that. Um, was there like a big transition from going from hockey to figure skating? Uh, yeah, the first year or so was a bit tricky. As you know, the blades are very, very different, whereas uh, hockey blades are flat with curves at the ends and figure skates have toe picks. And uh, the most difficult thing to get used to was the toe picks and uh, the uh, danger of tripping on them. And so the first little while I was <laughs> tripping all over the place, had some pretty nasty spills, but uh, I always loved the jumping and spitting aspect of skating, and that's kind of what drew me into it. So and that's what attracted you yes. to loving figure skating. Definitely. Yeah. So were you age four when you started playing hockey? or? Oh, when I first went on the ice and I joined my first uh, Thai hockey team when I was five and uh, I started figure skating the year after when I was six. And uh, yeah, as I said, did uh, them for many, many years up until the age of 13. So. When was your first performance? You? First performance I think would have been at the age of uh, six uh, in a preliminary or pre-preliminary level. And, uh, <laughs> I was uh, quite unsteady on my feet, but uh, I, I just loved it. I loved the uh, jumping aspect, the feeling of gliding, and uh, I guess the freedom to be able to do what I want on the ice. And uh, that love has continued to this day. Well, how do you feel on the ice? Like, uh, do you feel like you're flying? Like, what, what, how do you feel? Like... Well, now I think it's just become so natural. I've done it uh, uh, pretty much every day of my life for the past uh, almost 20 years now. So it's uh, pretty incredible to think about it now. But uh, uh, I think that's what continued to uh, keep it interesting for me every day, to keep me coming back, training five, six days a week, and putting the hours that I do in the training is uh, just the natural love of it and the love of what I do. So let's talk about your training. How much do you train? Uh, it depends on the season, but it's uh, quite intensive now. Uh, with the new judging system that uh, came into place about nine, ten years ago, it's, uh, the requirements have become a lot more rigorous, and we've had to do a lot more uh, cross-training to uh, adapt to the system. Uh, we've been doing uh, dance classes, working out in the gym, uh, long-distance running, uh, sprinting, and a multitude of off-ice training in addition to the uh, three hours or so of on-ice training that we do every day. Wow, and now running, how much do you run? Like you said, long distance running, like how much to an hour? Or? Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't say long distance in the sense because uh, it's really short distance for what a runner might be considering long distance, but we do run about uh, two or three kilometers, two or three times a week depending on the season. Wow. And uh, in addition to that, we do sprinting as part of our cross training as well. So. Uh, the, the main fin benefit that we get from running is the, uh, the cardio benefit and uh, our solos are very rigorous nowadays compared to the uh, 6.0 system where you might have a time to break and pause and catch your breath and now with, we, ha we have so many jump elements, we have detailed choreography, we have uh, so many steps, connecting steps in between. It's really from start to finish our complete performance and we don't have time to rest and so <laughs> Uh, it's become that much more difficult to train in terms of cardio uh, to make sure that we're, uh, we still have energy at the end of our solo to perform. Well, y you make it look easy, but it isn't. <laughs> it's a <laughs> lot of... <laughs> well, that's our goal, but, in any case, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you, is there a typical day for you? Like, how, when does your morning begin? Uh, well, I like <laughs> to sleep in as long as possible. <laughs> We actually start our trainings quite late in the day. Uh, for me, it's either 12 or 2 p.m., depending on the day, and we go typically until about 8 p.m. And so our day is uh, quite shifted towards the afternoon, evening, compared to a normal working day. And as such, I kind of, in the fall, winter, spring, when our typical schedule is, I would sleep in until about 10 a.m. or so to make sure I have maximum energy for that 7 to 8 p.m. time frame, and I can still give 100%. Now, do you meditate? Do you use um, visualization like, to 
to focus on your game? Uh, not for me, not really. There are athletes who have sports psychologists and they have their own regimen and are in their own routine, but I think it's very individualized. We each have uh, what works for them. How do you relax? What works for ourselves. I <laughs> relax. Uh, I, when I get home, I try to take my mind off of what has happened in the training, whether it's been a good or a bad day, and kind of separate uh, uh, skating from what happens in real life. And I try to think about more uh, uh, studying, uh, relaxing, talking with friends online, uh, uh, connecting with some of my fans, and uh, uh, really just separating the two kind of environments. There's the skating life, and then there's the personal life. Mm -hmm. And I read that in uh, 2010, you were the first skater to ever land two quadruple jumps in a short program. Congratulations. Uh, thank, you. thank you. And in 2008, you landed a quad triple triple combination in, his free, in your free program. I mean, how did you do that? <laughs> I mean, that's just awesome. Well, I think from a kid, I've always, uh, from my time as a kid when I was a skater, I've always wanted to challenge the most difficult jumps. and. Uh, I watched the top uh, Russian skaters at the time, Yevgeny Plushenko and Alexei Yagodin. Um, and of course, they were challenging each other uh, with their quad jumps. And I said at that time, one day I want to be able to do those jumps as well. And I want to be able to break some records. And uh, the, the fact that I've been able to do that uh, is something I'm very proud of in my career. And hopefully, I still have a couple more records that I can try and break in the future. You will. You will. <laughs> so tell us about Sochi. How was that for you? Ah, it's an absolutely amazing experience, uh, needless to say. I've been looking forward to the Olympic experience my whole life, uh, ever since I watched the Olympic Games for the first time on TV, the Summer Games in Atlanta, Georgia, 1996, and watching uh, Donovan Bailey take the gold medal. I think that inspired me to, at that point, become a part of the Olympic Games. I didn't know what sport it would be. But I knew at that time I wanted to be an Olympian and uh, represent Canada at the highest level. Mm -hmm. So how do you fuel your body? Like, what do you eat to keep on track with your skating? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's funny. As, as a kid, and really up until I was about 18 or 19 or so, I didn't worry too much nutritionally about what I was doing. I was pretty easygoing. I wouldn't tend to eat. Uh, too much junk food or things like that, but uh, I really wasn't too strict about what I, exactly I ate. But uh, now, as the as the demands are becoming more rigorous, and I want to get the the maximum amount of performance I can from my body, I've been uh, keeping uh, a fairly detailed records of what I eat. And now I tend to eat mostly organic food and uh, local food. Uh, tend to not eat processed food and really have been paying much more attention to what I eat now than what I have been in the past. Can you tell us your favorite dish? Favorite dish? <laughs> uh, well, I like both Italian food and Japanese food and uh, I've, I'm not too particular in what I uh, like to eat as, as long as it's fresh. And uh, my mom has been great about uh, cooking meals for me and getting to try new things. And uh, uh, for me, I like uh, there is a Japanese dish called a doria, and it's uh, a rice baked gratin. And for me, it's a very interesting flavor because I've never heard of it uh, up until that point where a fan told me about it. And uh, yeah, I've been up for trying many new things recently. Mm -hmm. Who are your fans? Uh, well, uh, skating as it is right now is very popular in Canada, but much more so in Japan. And we have uh, many, many skating fans who not only support Japanese skaters, but support skaters from all over the world. And uh, it's been incredible the amount of support that we've received uh, over the years from Canadian and Japanese fans. And uh, they've been great in giving us letters, uh, personal messages, but also presents and gifts. And uh, I think that's one of the most rewarding things about our sport of figure skating is being able to connect with the fans. And in turn, uh, we mutually benefit. And do you speak Japanese? Uh, yes, I've been, I've been learning that kind of as a hobby on the side. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, and uh, in addition to uh, French, which I took in uh, elementary and middle school, I took French immersion. And so uh, being able to connect with uh, fans from all over the world, but also different athletes, and uh, uh, because we get to travel so much, I think it's a really useful skill. 
I mean, so that brings me to the question is, how do you maintain a healthy lifestyle when you're on the road and touring? Like, how do you do it? Well, it, it can be difficult sometimes, especially when the options at airports or flights may not be the best. But I tend to, as much as I can, bring things from home if there isn't often options available wherever I'm traveling to. But uh, for the most part, our Canadian team has been very good about bringing uh, nutritionally beneficial things to the competitions and being able to support us if it's a location that might not have uh, uh, readily available uh, products, but uh, in in general, I think we don't have a problem. We can find local produce. We can find things wherever we go, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't think there's been too much of an issue with it. That's good. So, Kevin, what's next for you? Uh, well, the season's just starting now. A, a new Olympic cycle is starting, and I'm hoping to be able to reach the Olympic Games again in 2018, and hopefully earn another medal. But uh, uh, the first step in that is. Uh, actually fairly close to home. It's Skate Canada International in Kelowna at Wonder. the end of October. And that's part of the Grand Prix of figure skating series. Uh, There's six events that take part in six different countries and uh, the, the skaters who earn the top results will qualify for the Grand Prix final, which is held this year in Barcelona, Spain. So uh, uh, a very, very uh, motivating target to try and reach. <laughs> that's awesome. So I'm just curious to know like with as a runner, you know, you change your running shoes. What about your boots? Like it's well, boots, it's uh, really depending on the skater, but I would say as an average, probably two pairs a year, so one pair every six months or so. But uh, I've known skaters who have gone more than two years in a pair of boots, and I've known some skaters who change them every month. So it's really depending on the skater, uh, how stiff they like their boots, how quickly they break down. There's so many different brands of boots, and there's uh, so many different types of skaters, so it really depends. Yes. And like, who has been, or was there a role model in figure skating for you? Role models? I think, uh, well, where I've been training Burnaby Eight Rinks, we've had a number of uh, top-level skaters over the year. We've had skaters from all over the world, not just Canada, be able to train there, and I've been able to be motivated from that. Uh, but uh, I was able to train with uh, two Olympians, Manuel Sandu, who is also former oh, yes. national champion and Grand Prix final champion, and Mira Liang, who is also an Olympian as well. And, uh, uh, being able to see the hard work they put in and the detail they put into their performances and uh, at the high level they reached, I think, motivated me to become uh, a better skater myself. And uh, with, um, like, how do you deal with setbacks when things like, you know, food poisoning or whatever? How do you deal with that as a champion? Yeah. Well, I've been uh, accustomed to food poisoning a couple times, yes, <laughs> but... Uh, I was just asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you have to view the long-term picture. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to have my Olympic experience healthy, uh, really uninjured for the most part, and uh, haven't been sick at all in any major events, so I've been pretty fortunate that way, but... Uh, uh, if you do get sick, you have to view it as that's one competition that didn't go your way and you always have the uh, next competition to look forward to. Uh, it is difficult sometimes because we do put so many hours into the training and if it happens at an event like that, you can feel like, what was the training for? But at the same time, when you do achieve successes, it all becomes worth it, regardless of what happens in the past. Great attitude. And now, one more question. When you, do you have any rituals before you go on the ice? Do you wear a special sweater? Or what, what do you, do you have that? Not <laughs> really. I know a lot of skaters who do, and they have their own routine. For me, I like to be as quiet as possible uh, before I go to perform. I try to calm my mind, calm my nerves, and I feel I I'm able to relax that way. I know other skaters who that would be the worst thing for them. They want to they want to talk, they want to laugh, they want to joke with people and be in a lighthearted mood. But for me, I think I just want to be as calm as possible before I perform. That's wonderful. Well, I wanted to thank you very much, Kevin, for coming on the show, and uh, good luck to you. And hope to have you back on the show. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you very thank much. You. Thousands of runners and walkers across Canada participated in the Terry Fox Run to help raise funds for cancer research. Run With It was there to cover it.
Thanks for watching Run With It. If you have a question or comment, go to our website on the screen. Until next time, run with it.